are we on? We're on, we're in. This is uh, G from uh, GTV. This is the Native Speakers Academy uh, educational video blog where we look at different perspectives on education. And uh, today's theme is uh, reading. Uh, we're going to look at recent articles about reading and reading skills and perspectives within the education and a few perspectives from outside as well. So let's get going. Our first article today is uh, from uh, from Science Daily newspaper from April the 17th. All of these articles are posted on our websites so I'll give you links to that uh, later and uh, also with the video. Uh, the article is Preschoolers Reading Skills benefit from one modest change by teachers. Uh, perhaps this should be from the uh, idiocy of science daily. Let's, let's have a look at this. The small change involves making specific references to print in books while reading to children, such as pointing out letters and words on pages, showing capital letters, showing how you read from left to right and from top to bottom. If they're not able to gain that basic principle by themselves or from seeing you do it, um, there's, uh, there's obviously something wrong. Um, anyway, you should also point out spelling and grammar if you're doing that. They don't mention that. Um, Preschool children whose teachers used print references during storybook reading showed more advanced reading skills one and even two years later when compared to children whose teachers did not use the references. Um, my note here is uh, teach them more and they learn more. Um, it's really that simple. Uh, the first study, this is the first study to show causal links between reference in print and liter literacy achievement. Um, understand connections between things and you grow, basically. Using print references during reading was just a slight t tweak to what teachers were already doing in the classroom, but it led to a sizable improvement in reading for kids, said uh, Shane uh, Piasta, co-author of the study uh, from Ohio State University. This would be a very manageable change for most preschool teachers who are already, who are already doing storybook reading in class. Uh, yeah, but you really want the students to be doing their own reading as well. Um, she conducted the survey. It goes on and on. On results appear April 2012 issue of the journal Child Development. Uh, the study is part of a project STAR. They love using those uh, um, acronyms. Sit together and read a randomized clinical trial based at Ohio State to test short and long-term impacts associated with reading regularly to preschool children in the classroom. Um, well, obviously, if they're more involved in the education, they're going to be better. Um, the study involved more than 300 children in 85 classrooms who participated in a 30-week shared reading program. As a group, the children came from low-income homes, started with below average language skills, and were at substantial risk for later reading difficulties. Um, we do make problems for ourselves. It is sort of uh, uh, hinting here that the, the poor are also stupid, and uh, that um, if we don't help them, they won't be able to help themselves, um, which is ridiculous. Um, moving on, it's notable that students with higher uh, doses of star classrooms scored higher on tests of reading comprehension. Um, I guess there's also a question there about what is the comprehension? Is it something that you want them to know or is it something they discover for themselves? Uh, if you're getting kids to pay attention to letters and words, it makes sense that they will do better at word recognition and spelling. Do we really need 200 years of science to discover this? Um, it's stunning that the um, amount of uh, that ignorance that's uh, 
presented as a scientific discovery. But the fact that they also did better at understanding the passages is really exciting. Oh my god, wow, we just have to invest more money to do more studies about this, then won't we? And it goes on and on. My other notes here say, what have teachers been doing for the last 200 years? Right, you can answer that yourself. Um, this, uh, the full, um, the full article will be will be posted uh, um, on our website. You can read more about it. Um, the research was supported by grants from the Institute of Educational Sciences because if we don't have grants, we can't do anything. Obviously. Um, second article is uh, no joy in reading for half of students. Uh, that's an interesting, interestingly worded title. This is from uh, the Toronto Star in Canada. Just half of grade three, the grade six pupils say they like to read, a number that has plummeted from over a decade ago. According to a new report that warns of a long-term impact of this worrying trend, literacy, along with writing and maths, has been the center of Ontario's educational agenda for more than a decade. That means for only a decade. Um, uh, my notes here say, why do they have to be told to read? Um, isn't reading some um, skill that people will develop with their own natural curiosity if they're allowed to develop naturally? And if they're allowed to be curious, of course, as well. Um, while Ontario's literary scores have improved, something unexpected has happened. There's been a decline in students who report that they like to read. Oh yes, better test results, but um, lower reality ratings. Um, based on survey questions and standards, it goes on. The significant decline may have an immediate and lasting impact on Ontario students. <clears throat> really, education has an impact. That's unbelievable. Uh, the trend mirrors other countries, including England, where there's an emphasis on standardized testing, and the people are thick as sheep, uh, huddled together on a cold day, I imagine. Um, it matters for kids because reading is part of every single aspect of school life. <laughs> yeah, they, they, these articles are like being presented to idiots. Um, uh, our achievement is going up while interest in reading is going down. In the long run, that's not a sustainable pattern. Let's use the, the, the keywords, um, shall we? Sustainable, sustainable, sustainable. Sustainable for who and for what reasons. A uh, little bit of a uh, little bit of double speak there when you say achievement is going up, but interest is going down. Double speak, double think, whatever you want to call it. The People for Education report cites several possible reasons for the decline, including the intense focus on literacy, which is good, but there's a part of that focus that makes kids see reading as work, and that's taken away some of the fun and the joy. Uh, students may not consider all the reading they do online from websites to text messages as real reading because it's not. You're only reading parts and you get thrown off by pictures and hyperlinks and you never finish what you started. Um, the report also points to the number of teacher librarians in schools which shows a different attitudes. It's uh, uh, essentially saying that it's positive for uh, uh, librarians to be in schools. Of course it is. Uh, in the curriculum there's not an emphasis on the pleasure of reading and the joy of reading and what it can offer to your life. Of course because you're not supposed to think if you follow the doctrines of the system. Yeah? Um, and then it goes on to uh, talk about a teacher who discovered that she could actually get people interested in reading, which she presents as like a major success. Um, I guess it is in some schools. Small groups of students read a novel in parts uh, and 
each stage they have in-depth discussions about the characters. Well, that's just one way of doing things, I suppose. Uh, read more about that on our website. Um, moving on to the next article. Reading a book adds a year to children's education. Of course it does. I mean, but it's lifelong education that we really need to be looking for, I think, at the end of the day. Mm. Nick Gibb, the school minister, said that uh, reading books for just half an hour a day could be worth up to 12 months extra schooling by the age of 15. Of course it is. That's why they don't get you to read books. Uh, today at the Department for Education, or they get you to read um, irrelevant books or books that you have uh, no possible ability to comprehend because you haven't had the real life experience that you need to um, really assess the quality of the, the writing. That's for the majority of children. There are, of course, special cases. Today, the Education Department will unveil plans for a national reading competition. Why do we need a competition? Why do we need to fight with each other to be better? Um, for children in the last three years of primary education and the first year of secondary school. So we'll do a little bit here, a little bit there, and we hope it's going to have some effect. Uh, the contest is designed to, to boost literary standards and encourage a generation of reluctant readers to pick up books. Boys often thrive on a bit of healthy competition in the library. Um, why don't we just have more role models in society that actually um, promote the reading of, of, of books? Um, you ever notice how um, books are arranged in, in, in bookshops in those different categories and, and how they're very much limited in their scope if you compare it to the um, breadth and depth of uh, reading that actually exists if you if you look at the internet and how there's always a focus on um, fiction rather than fact um, in, these, in these books. Anyway, that's irrelevant. Children should always have a book on the go, said Mr. Gibb. The difference in achievement between children who read for half an hour a day in their spare time and those who do not is huge. That's why we were all given televisions, I imagine. A new national reading competition is designed to give a competitive spur. Oh, more competition, more competition. Why can't we just enjoy things? Um, there's a group of children who can read but won't read. Because they're not given anything interesting to read, uh, I, I imagine. Uh, currently, one in six children are still struggling to read when they leave primary school. Why? What are they doing in there? Um, you know, if your child's in that situation, get them out of school, teach them yourself. And don't think you can't, because you can. Uh, one in ten boys aged 11 has a reading age no better than a seven-year-old. Well, there's an education system working for you. Uh, Competitions, uh, my, my note here is also that competitions um, tend to focus on the, the, the end result rather than the <laughs> rather than the process, not the protest, the process. Um, there was some other note I wanted to make here that competition often encourages cheating as well. Creativity, I suppose. All primary schools are now being expected to teach using phonics, the back to basics method of teaching in which children break down words into their individual sounds. And that's a positive step. Six year olds are being given a reading test requiring them to accur accurately decode 30 words. Only 30 words. Why do they always like, have a minimum target? Um, it's like reaching the minimum is good. Um, Today it will be announced, the government will be launching the reading competition, and so on and so on. The competition will be based around who can finish the most books. There we go, the end. The end is more important than the process, according to these people. Ridiculous. Uh, that was from Telegraph. Uh, you can find it on their website also. Our next article, reading to kids can set them on the path to success. This is where parent involvement comes into things and uh, is essential in 
every form of education. Did you read to your kids last night? If you have young children, you probably did, but if you have older school aged kids, you likely didn't. And that's a shame because reading to your kids can be a key to their success. Oh my god, it's a stunning new report that says reading can help. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development finds that reading to kids may be a good indication of how involved parents are in kids' learning. Oh, what a stunning conclusion to have reached while all your academic studies have really helped us progress through society. Uh, the finding was highlighted in Thomas Friedman's column in the New York Times this week in a piece called How About Better Parents. Yes, 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 it's the parents that are the problem, of course. Um, the study found that 15-year-old students whose parents often read books with them during the first year of primary school showed markedly higher scores in uh, PISA 2009 than students whose parents read with them infrequently or not at all. Oh my god, parents being involved in children's education makes a difference. The performance advantage among students whose parents read to them in their early school years is evident regardless of the family's social economic background. Yes, we are all equal. We're all born equal and there's nothing nothing special. It's all about the environment we grow up in. That's what they don't want you to know. Um, I have another note here that says being normal helps. Um, the children of parents who read a book to their children at least once or twice a week during the first year of elementary school scored an average of uh, blah 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 points 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 points. Um, the study also found that uh, having parents simply ask about a child's day at school can boost scores on a test. Students whose parents discuss political or social issues, uh, they have their children develop as well, of course, naturally. Um, ah, so, you know, it's basically saying that, that, that the parents affect the education more than the school. Um, and then we force children to spend more time in school than they do with parents. Oh, mistake. Um, Parent, <laughs> parenting expert, don't you just love experts? Parenting expert, I mean, I wonder if she's a better expert. I wonder how many children she has. I wonder if she's a better expert than all the other experts who are expertly deciding about expert things at the moment. Um, anyway, she's not surprised by the findings. The author of such parenting books as Honey, I Wrecked the Kids says, while she loves to wag a finger with all that's wrong at Canada's education system, she knows that parents have a big role to play too. The point is we're all in this game together. Oh, is it a game? Uh, perhaps it is. And it turns out that our parents' engagement is important. A lot of us did the whole reading at bedtime when we were tucking our kids in, but then realized as soon as they get to elementary school, a lot of parents stop reading to their kids. Yes, that's the effect that school has on them. They're tired. They're bored, they're disinterested, school stops natural educational processes. Um, also notes that parents don't have to read to their kids to engage them. There are many other ways. Those parents who showed a kind of caring and concern and engagement, those kids seem to do really well. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Uh, kids will excel academically if they feel they have home support. I abbreviated that article. Uh, you'll find that on our website. Uh, How to Read with Your Child by Pat Wyman. Um, that's the next article. Read with your child to encourage him to become part of uh, reading time. Uh, reading to your child is a great way to help your child learn. Sometimes though, simply reading the words on the page may not be stimulating enough. Some of the time, your child might be perfectly content to sit and listen, and so on. The trick is reading with your child. Examples of how to do this. So, um, here's the positive parts. Uh, point to the pictures on the page. See if the child can describe what the illustrations show. Is the main character there? Where does the story take place? Is it daytime or nighttime? Do you think it will be the same at the end of the story? 
Uh, next, have your child try to reason how the picture relates to the story. Could it be because uh, there is some connection there? Moving on. <laughs> Oops. Identify specific words used in the story at a teachable moment. Talk about bigger, smaller, colors, reasons why. Uh, enjoy watching a child's excitement as he or she tries to answer questions or comes up with other ways to add or change stories. You can prompt your child as well about what's going to happen on the next page. Uh, act out part of the story, make up a song or dance, uh, read at different times of the day, have animals or toys act out the story, lots of good ways there. Uh, I think a good parent is a creative parent, so uh, you have to do whatever's right for you. Um, our last article today is school children failing to read books. So we covered this a little bit earlier, but we will just review the whole idea that uh, children's love of classic literature is being ruined as books are increasingly dismantled to help students pass exams. That's the point of the exam, to dismantle everything. Dismantle the books, dismantle the schools, dismantle the ideas, dismantle brains. Most students fail to read complete novels at school after being presented with short extracts and worksheets to practice comprehension, or they buy the pass notes books, which give them the answers to the questions that they're probably going to get, so they don't need to read the books at all. Um, the National Union of Teachers said the decline was fueled by widespread closure of school libraries to save money. We are in the last generation of books. That's my note here. We have to be very aware of the incremental steps that society is taking at the moment, the, the gradual changes. A children's author who will be addressing the National Union of Teachers said that schools use extracts to spot the metaphor or the simile instead of allowing children to read whole books. Of course they do. We have, we have seen a real increase in the technical dismantling of literature with the specific aim of hitting targets. That's science for you. One of my daughters came home to tell me she was doing great expectations as part of her GCSEs. It turned out all they were doing was reading chapter 1 and then skipping to chapter 39. They also watched the film version, which doesn't even have the same ending as the book. Ah, oh, stunning, but the kids were happy. No. Um, Mr. Gibbons, who wrote the best-selling Shadow of the Minotaur, uh, told how one secondary school class he visited was asked to scan part of Macbeth for scenes that fitted with the theme of ambition because the teacher thought it was going to be in their exam. That's just genius, really, isn't it? There's no attempt to read the thing, the book, or understand it. Um, half of schools regularly admit failing to finish novels because whole book teaching was not a priority in class. And this man has led campaigns against the government. He's even written to the government ordering that extracts of his book be removed from worksheets. They read it all or not at all. Students should also be given a wide exposure to a range of texts. Well, he's sort of on the ball here. I don't think he gets the bigger picture. Uh, all children should be given a designated entitlement to read. Don't we have that anyway, just by being born? Um, to read what? Um, and we, this, is, this is the result of our long process of, of studying education with all our experts in it. We just have lost the basic skills that naturally come to us through life. We sit and wait to be told what to do, to be taught how to be, rather than having the experience for ourselves. Tests and league tables are stul have, sorry, have a stultifying effect on reading in schools. Of course they do. That was a great word, stultifying. 
The emphasis has been on moving children away from reading books for pleasure and turning the whole practice of reading into a broken down, atomized skill set. This is the scientific method used for the scientific age. So I hope I've given you something to think about in terms of uh, reading, uh, personal reading, reading with your family, reading with children, and reading in schools. Uh, all of these are posted on our websites. They are NSA hyphen Slovakia, they are NSA hyphen education, and we have a few more out there as well. Find us on Facebook, and this is going to go up on YouTube. And uh, keep well, and we'll post another educational video real soon. And uh, I will see you then. Thank you very much, and take care.